That's right. Once again, it's time for Uncle Ricky's house. Join Uncle Ricky as today's topic is everything ain't for everybody. Hello there. I'm Uncle Ricky. I want to welcome you to another episode of Uncle Ricky's house. This episode is kind of hard for me to do because it involves the United States Navy. Something that is one of the most cherished parts, memories in my life is my service in submarine, in the submarine fleet in the US Navy. And unfortunately, today, we're going to talk about the George Washington and the suicide aboard the Washington. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes and try to give you enough background so that you can understand the full implication of these suicides over and above the fact that it's a waste of human life. This is the USS George Washington CVN-73. The George Washington is home ported out of Norfolk Naval Base in Norfolk, Virginia. Currently, the Washington is undergoing a nuclear refueling in Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company in Newport News, Virginia. I'm familiar with Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company because I'm a plank owner on the USS Atlanta SSN 712 which was built at Newport News. That was my first shipboard assignment. My second shipboard assignment was aboard the USS Jacksonville SSN 699. Both subs were 688 class, Los Angeles class fast attacks. Officer of the deck, Chief of the Watch, I have a straight board. Chief of the Watch, this is the Officer of the deck. Dive the boat. How you doing? Thank you for indulging my short moment of insanity. Like I said, it's a favorite memory. But back to the serious side. The USS George Washington CVN-73 uh, Nimitz class aircraft carrier, United States Navy. It is in Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company in Newport News, Virginia. It's normally home base at Norfolk Naval Base. It's currently undergoing a nuclear refueling. That evolution is supposed to take four years. Now, in the last 10 months, the George Washington has had 10, 10 suicides. Ten crew members have decided to take their own lives. Now before we delve into that and before I do my Uncle Ricky explanation, I'd like to take a moment to pay respects to my fallen comrades, my fallen brothers and sisters.
the alarmingly high suicide rate throughout the military services has more than drawn the attention of the big wigs at the Pentagon. The basic reason is it's just it's it's fundamental. I mean, if you go to war and your own people are killing themselves off faster than the enemy is killing them, what kind of chance do you have of winning? The highest increases uh, during the last year, it was a 15% increase across all services. Uh, the total last year was 103 souls lost to suicide up from like 76 the year before some of this can be explained you know the end of afghan da, 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 da. there were real conflicts that u.s troops were involved in but the rest were basically suicides committed while here stationed here in the united states or in facilities located in the united states uh, one young sub sailor in Hawaii, uh, for whatever reason, decided to commit suicide. He you, he was standing uh, an armed watch, which uh, was probably topside watch. Below decks watches aren't usually armed, uh, but as the topside watch, they're armed with the with a semi-automatic pistol as a, as a sidearm. He decided to kill himself uh, while on watch but whatever he was frustrated at he decided to take out two shipyard workers before he killed himself incidents like this are are unfortunate but they are becoming more and more uncommon after the last suicide on the george washington the master chief of the navy came down to speak to the enlisted people the sailor that committed suicide that the uh, his parents uh, when they were interviewed said that they weren't really pleased with the master chief because they thought his speech lacked sincerity and sympathy I listened to portions of the speech basically because I knew as master chief of the Navy I kind of figured what he was going to say the master chief's job is to ride herd over all the enlisted personnel in the United States Navy. He is personally responsible for making sure that training and programs that are uh, pertinent to the enlisted personnel produce results, efficient, dedicated, professional, fighting, technically, uh, un unmatchable uh, professionally proficient people that can go out and operate the systems that they're charged with and be expected to bring home the desired outcome and that outcome is victory the George Washington has a crew of about 3,250 people max the thing is that um, uh, 2,000, approximately 2,600 of those people are air wing personnel. In other words, their purpose for being on board is to support and operate the equipment needed to launch, maintain, and recover the aircraft on board. So if they're in dry dock in Newport News getting refueled, there's no need for the aircraft. If there's no need for the aircraft, there's no need for those 2,600 people. So they get reassigned to wherever their parent squadrons are reassigned to. That leaves about 1,000, maybe 1,200 people on board. These 1,200 people are trapped. And if you look at the complaints or if you look at the notes that were left behind, by the people that committed suicide you find several things in common one they're very young that's not amazing because it's the military the war is a young person's game two it's not contained 
by one sex or one gender or the other. Uh, female suicide, male suicide, black suicide, white suicide, Hispanic suicide. It's not particular to a class or a group or whatever. It's an individual thing. And the reason being every last one of them almost to the T before they kill themselves, they either talk to friends or family saying that they were extremely frustrated. They were they just didn't understand why they were where they were and why they had to do why they had to they were they were basically proud to do their jobs or to not to do their job. They were proud to be a part of the Navy, but they weren't because they were, I don't know, so self-serving or I don't even want to self say self-serving because that sounds like I'm trying to vilify, but because they were of a certain attitude, they weren't fitting in, they weren't conforming, and this was causing them to be frustrated. Shipyard duty is just, it's, it's nasty work. Every shipyard, I don't think there's a clean shipyard in the world, military or civilian. Newport News does wonderful work. They build amazing things. But the shipyard is full of giant rats. The rats are so big that the cats don't stand a chance. The rats are so big. I remember uh, the last time, well, when I was the, the last phase of new construction, when the boat was still up on blocks in the dry dock, it was during the Christmas holidays. So in the Christmas holidays, the thousands of shipyard workers go on their Christmas break. When they go on their Christmas break, they stop dropping sandwiches and leaving lunches and bags of potato chips. So the rats have no, after a couple of days, the rats have no convenient source of food. So then they come after the boats because they can smell the food cooking on the boats. The rats are so big and so fertile the Navy knows that if they get into a boat and lay I mean and ha and birth young rats that boat especially if it's like a submarine is doomed it's just straight doomed they issued us 12 gauge pump shotguns over the Christmas holidays with orders to shoot to kill if we saw a rat come on board. Honest and no no bullshit. But this is this is I'm just saying that to say this this is the type of idiosyncrasy in, in the shipyard. Uh, and why I'm going this way is because technology has improved some things, materials have changed, uh you know, blase, 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 but the process, the mechanics of overhaul, the mechanics of refueling, the mechanics of being in the shipyard up in that dry dock on top of those blocks, whether you're a little boat or a big ship, is no different. If you're in that crew, your life is just going to be miserable for X amount of time. My thing was, I went through it, I suffered, but I made it through. So, why can't these 10 people make it through? And I realized how judgmental I was being because I was discounting the fact, yeah, a lot of people made it through, a lot of people are making it through now. But, when I was there, I remember two, possibly three suicides from personnel not on my boat but on other boats that were in the yard or over in Portsmouth at the time I, uh, I, I I've seen attempted uh, suicides uh, I had a I had an engineer one time lieutenant commander he was the engineer of the boat brand new just came just reported in his first duty day in dry dock I'm the below decks watch I'm looking for him I can't find him I can't find him I called topside I said have you seen the engineer? The guy, the topside watch goes, yeah, he's he's standing uh, back aft by by the uh, by the mast. So I'm like, what's he doing? He says, I don't know, dude, but I don't think he's good because 
he's standing there and if I see if I if what I'm seeing is correct uh, he's just standing there eating rubber bands we couldn't talk him down we couldn't and it was obvious that he was standing there staring trying to make up his mind whether he could jump or not so we had to call medical personnel from you know from the tender come get this cat before you find him splattered all over the bottom of the dry dock there are pressures the, and, and the job you do and the, and the circumstances you live under do not support you dealing with your pressures well this is the thing with the new people it's not a matter of Who's the, who's the strongest or who's the smartest or who's the better between the younger generation and the older generation? It's obvious. Dave Chappelle said it best. America has become a nation of thin-skinned bitches. Everyone on both sides of this issue, the suicide victim, the people left behind, the, I don't know, the, the, the witness, whatever. There's a confusion as to the actual cause and effect situation. The conditions in the shipyard, like I said, are basically universal. That everywhere you go, that's shipyard, it's a shipyard. That is what a shipyard is. That is what a shipyard is all about. Shipyard has one function. And the shipyard does that function well. If you want to fit into the function of the shipyard to get what you need from the shipyard, you have to learn to adopt or become adept to the situation at least until you get out of the shipyard with what you want in your possession the thing is since we have become so self-centered so self-absorbed so self-entitled so self-anointed we are no longer malleable we can't bend we can't twist we can't break it's my way or the highway and this is why certain people have a hard time adjusting to military life military life is like the shipyard military the military has one function to protect and defend the nation against all enemies foreign and domestic that means you have to be efficient and proficient at killing you have to be able to wage war with no limitations. You have to be able to go out and do your duty because war is not going to change. War from the beginning of time until now produces the same product, a winner. And that winner gets there by grinding the enemy into non-existence and if you're so wrapped up in yourself if you're so self-absorbed if you are so hung up on being you if you think that you make the uniform look good and, the un and it's not the uniform making you look good then there will always be a problem Some situations, especially when we come off of the streets and get out of civilian life, they are set up for a reason. It doesn't mean that they can't be tweaked. It doesn't mean that they can't be adjusted. But you cannot go in and change the function to suit yourself. Ten people in ten months. Go figure. The, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close now, but I'm going to close with this thought. In the beginning, when I started this video, I said that no matter how unfortunate or sad or tragic the situation is, it's 
necessary. The Navy has always known or understood that the shipyard wasn't the problem. The individual comes in with the problem. They bring their own problem. The shipyard is the pressure cooker that either makes them learn how to suck it up and move on or get wise enough to seek help to eradicate the problem, to defeat the problem, or unfortunately take that option, that final option because they feel like they have run into a solid wall and because they can't be them, they can't be what they want to be, they rather not be. The military, all branches of the military, they start working on your mind from the day you step off that bus in boot camp. Their first goal is to take you from being a civilian and turn you into whatever service you are. If it's the Navy, you're no longer a civilian, you're a sailor. If it's the Air Force, you're no longer a civilian, you're an airman. If you're in the Army, Army Reserve, Army National Guard, you're no longer a civilian. You are a soldier. If you're in the Coast Guard, you're no longer a civilian. You're a fucking puddle pirate. I'm sorry. It's that Navy Coast Guard thing. But you get the point. You get the point. Today, the social situation has changed the system the intermediate system has to remain the same because it has to feed its final product into the thing that has been the same since the very first one Remember when I said war will always be war? Well, in order to fight a war, you got to be able to deal with the vulgarity of war, the idiosyncrasy of war, the chaos, the mayhem. It's becoming a more difficult job because the quality of the people being input into the system is changing. And unfortunately, it's not changing for the better. Americans are so self-centered, self-absorbed, self-anointed, so divided that when they go into boot camp, you cannot, you can never be sure whether that 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 whether they have gotten over that, gotten around it, or just figured, well, you know what. If I just shut my mouth, do my push-ups, run my miles, salute, I can get out of here and go about, about my merry way. That's dangerous because now you have a defective product that's moved further into the system that hasn't been spotted. There's nothing saying that it's going to make it past the first hurdle. This is the whole problem. If you can't deal with a flooded toilet, if you can't deal with an irregular meal schedule, if you can't deal with missing a little sleep, how are you going to deal with getting bombed, getting strafed, having to shoot somebody in the head? How are you going to deal, not even not even a battle scenario, how are you going to deal with waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning after you just worked a 16 hour shift and you can't see because the lights are out and, the, and you're birthing space is full of smoke and there's water pouring in through from somewhere from the deck from the bulkhead from the overhead how do you deal with that that's violating your world that's robbing you of your sleep I know it, it sounds juvenile it sounds childish but that is the reality of the situation. If you can't turn yourself down, if you can't 
adapt yourself to the required mold to go out and do your time proven time dated standard job then you fail the Navy has failed because it failed to conform you the last thing I'm going to mention is one reason we have become so self-absorbed if you look at if you look at the rise in suicides nationwide and in the military and then if you look at the rise in the popularity I know I'm sounding like extreme right-wing grandpa right now but this is this is true if you look at the time when the rise in the popularity of the internet and social media started let's say 10 10 years ago you will see a correlation between the numbers more people use social media suicide creep up the thing is what we don't understand is we become so desperate to prove ourselves right to make our to make ourselves king and queen in our own world we fail to realize that this thing right here this thing right here and I, I hope you notice I haven't let mine go I'm, I'm hooked I'm addicted because it makes it becomes our world this is our king maker the, the way it's set up the way that the, the companies make money off of us with this with the internet it can also be used as a tool for mind control they the system watches what you read what you what how you how you interact with people what people you interact with how much time you spend here how much time you spend there how much time you spend watching Jerry Falwell how much time you spend watching Pornhub how much time you spend shopping on Amazon and they make a virtual model of you then they run the virtual through different scenarios a computer does all of this does all of this run your virtual through different scenarios and then they start predicting the probability of how you will react in certain situations then they use that to pump your timeline your news feed with a world that's tailored to you if the world is tailored to you then you feel like you're a king or queen you can be friends with Jody and Sally and you guys communicate your friends on the same on, on, on the same social media platform but your timeline is your kingdom Sally's timeline is her kingdom it's tailored to her your buddy over here his timeline is tailored to them it makes you feel special the thing is when you become addicted to this when it becomes your love when you are forced to separate from it for any reason whether it's family work responsibilities or the motherfucking call of duty mentally you reject it because just like a drug addict that drug becomes your love that drug becomes your reason for being you live to serve the drug because the drug makes you all that you can be same thing with this thing as long as you got this as long as you're stroking your timeline you're getting fed with information all day long that and given the ability to do exactly what you want to do in your own world you are king queen ruler in your own world in the military you got responsibilities you have to be accountable you have to be responsible that takes you away from this young people in the military when they get taken away from this they get resentful if they don't learn how to handle that resentment because I can't play with my phone then believe it or not that manifests into despair I'm away from my loved one just like you miss your mom because she's back there in, in, in Sucker Rock, Kansas, and you're stuck over here in a shitty ship, shipyard in Newport News, that becomes frustration. You got to get up and do a, a stand a, a six hour watch and then do six hours of training 
and then do three hours of of, of uh, uh, extended duty, extra duty. That's frustration because you can't be with your baby. You think I'm wrong? Look at how many people, brand new in the Navy, under the age of 23. What's their favorite toy? What's their favorite source of information? Who's their favorite friend? If it is a human, they contact them through this. This is their life. These are the things that the Navy has to learn to deal with. These are the things that the Navy has to overcome in order to continue to perform the basic function of the military better than the rest. Thank you for joining me once again at Uncle Ricky's house. I hope that now you understand that <laughs> everything ain't for everybody. And don't feel bad if I didn't mention the people in the middle because I hope by now that you understand when I go through something like this and I don't say exactly that these are the people in the middle. I hope you understand that you already are people in the middle. People in the middle. We do the most. We are the most. And we get screwed the most. Until next time, it's Uncle Ricky saying sayonara and see you later, sucker. Have a good day.